Venerable Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri, former director of Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Javardhanapur, who will deliver the convocation address. Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri has a rare combination of being a chartered manager, chartered HR professional, and a chartered electrical engineer. He is acclaimed as a conference speaker, corporate trainer, strategy consultant, author, and an academic. He is the immediate past director of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Javardhanapura. He is the president of the Chartered Management Institute, Sri Lanka chapter. He was also a vice president of the Asia Pacific Federation of Human Resource Management. He is an adjunct professor of the Price College of Business University of Oklahoma, USA. Professor Dharmasiri carries three decades of private and public sector experience with consultancy engagements in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. He is a Commonwealth Doctoral Fellow, Fulbright Postdoctoral Fellow, and a Commonwealth Postdoctoral Fellow. He holds a PhD and a MBA from the Postgraduate Institute of Management and a BSc in Electrical Engineering from the University of Moratua. Being an author of 10 books and former editor of the longest publishing management journal in Sri Lanka, SLJM, he has won many accolades, including gold medals for best papers in two international management conferences, Emerald Best Paper Award in 2014, and in 2010, the Platinum Award by the alumni of the Postgraduate Institute of Management for Outstanding Academic Contribution. It's my pleasure and honor to invite Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. Most Venerable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Distinguished Academics, Committed Administrators, including the academic staff, respected invitees, including the happy parents who are in the audience, my dear graduates. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you all on this solemn and significant occasion. I consider convocation as a commencement in consolidating competence and confidence, a new journey has just begun. Hence, at the outset, let me congratulate all graduates who have gathered here for their gallant path ahead. I intend to share a few thoughts, hopefully of timely relevance, in connecting the broad contours of change. As Buddha said, nothing is permanent except change. It is an invitation to move from where we are to be better. It says that the only person who loves change is a baby with a wet diaper. Change is uncomfortable. Human nature is such that there is resistance to move beyond comfort zones. Renowned novelist D.H. Lawrence puts this so vividly. No one fears a new idea, and what they fear is a new experience. Telling is easy and doing is difficult. That is why you need to drive change. There are many instances, both local and overseas, where change initiatives have failed due to lack of leadership. Whether we like it or not, change has become a compelling necessity in an increasingly competitive world. As Charles Darwin said, it is not the strongest species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones who are most responsive to change. Whether you're distinct as a dynamic dolphin or extinct as a devastated dinosaur will depend on how you respond to change. It can be a case of being a victor or a victim. Kurt Levin, a German-American psychologist, discussed way back in 1951 a three-step concept to change. In fact, change management process. As he builds it briefly and brilliantly, such a process is structured around three interrelated activities unfreezing the existing organization structures, systems, and procedures, and then implementing changes to create the desired organizational outcomes and refreezing 
the organization. Unfreezing, implementing, and refreezing. Levin also uses an interesting metaphor to describe the process of change. He suggested that changing an organization is like uh, navigating a large ship across calm waters. The captain makes the occasional adjustment to the ship's course. Uh, there is a complex but coordinated activity while the ship reorients it, and then the whole ship moves off calmly in a new direction. Championing change is a crucial challenge for corporations. Right blend of the scope and scale of change with the conducive leadership style should be employed in such instances. Task before self can be a sensible approach in making uh, them happen. As Harry Truman, a former US president said, it is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. You need something that does not rapidly change with changing times. There's a changeless core of uh, values leading to consistent ethical behavior. It was uh, Warren Bennings and Bert Nanus, two management thinkers introduced in 1985 what we are now much familiar with as VUCA 1.0 reality. It talks about VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. It requires a resilient response, which I call as VUCA 2.0, another VUCA. So it's all about a vision, understanding, confidence, and agility. Jamais Cassio, an American anthropologist, articulates a refreshingly new world view, and it is a banny world. As he argues, the world today is brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible, B-A-N-I. Cassio writes about the intersection of emerging technologies, environmental dilemmas, and cultural transformation, specializing in the design and creation of plausible scenarios of the future. His work focuses on the importance of long-term systemic thinking, emphasizing the power of openness, transparency, and flexibility as catalysts for building a more resilient society. So let's go through the terms. Brittle means being fragile, breakable, while seeming firm. It refers to something that is not as strong as, as it seems. It is illusory strength the belief that everything will be all right, and the assumptions that we all know are true, except that they are not. Brittle refers to the myths that people tell themselves and each other to feel better and more secure. Anxious is a term associated with a feeling of helplessness, of being overwhelmed by everything that one faces. It comes with stress and worrying and a fear of not being able to cope with what the world asks and not really knowing what will come in the first place, thereby making it hard or impossible to make it the right decisions. Nonlinear is already a popular concept for a longer time. In innovation, for example, it basically says that there is no simple straight route from A to B. Instead, there are detours, dead ends, and unexpected outcomes. It's also part of the common vocabulary in statistics, where it refers to a relationship between two or more variables that is not a straight line. The fact that people increasingly talk about nonlinearity, again, doesn't say anything about the world in which they live. Nonlinearity has always been there, and it is a natural feature of any complex system. It is commonly known as the butterfly effect. The fact that a chain of cause-effect relationships started by a small event, for example, a butterfly flapping its wings can result in highly unexpected and disruptive events, such as a tornado at the other side of the ocean. Incomprehensible refers to people's experience that they do not understand what's going on. They can't oversee it, can't grasp it, can't interpret what happens and why. This means that they can't find answers they are looking for, and as, for, as far as they do get answers, that they can't make sense of the answers either. 
This comes with the illusion of knowledge. People might have thought they understood the world, but they never have. It is for this reason that experts and scientists frequently say things as, the more I know, the more I realize, I do not know. The world is a mystery, despite the carefully built up illusion that we understand it. And maybe that is not something to worry about. On the contrary, it makes the world and our lives worthwhile. Oh, as Einstein told us, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. As stated in the Forbes magazine, Danny says something about people and how they have mistakenly perceived the world up to now. In the sense, it is a reality check intending to shatter four illusions of humanity's current predictions of the world or perceptions of the world. As Jamais Cassio further elaborates, Banny takes these challenges to a new level. Rather than saying something about the world, it first and foremost says something about how we perceived it. Having moved from COVID frying pan to chaos fire, Sri Lanka is a case in point for manifesting Banny. We have a brittle political setup that is supposed to be stable with democratically elected representatives. Needless to state that the dire consequences we experienced last year, as someone called it, a chase study than a case study. Anxiety is nothing new to us Sri Lankans. Being indecisive from the leadership end has resulted in anxiety among masses in multiple fronts. As an example, shortage of vital drugs on one hand and exorbitant prices of them on the other hand have jointly created much anxiety among suffering millions. Nonlinear path is also becoming increasingly familiar to Sri Lankans. We have seen that many things do not happen in a straightforward manner. The delays in obtaining the IMF funds are a timely example where the associated complexities creating delays and frustrations resulting in a continuing bumpy ride. Incomprehensible with the illusion of knowledge is also having a very high relevance here. How some so-called experts came forward to handle economic challenges and failed to deliver is much evident. The sad truth is that the lack of understanding of the grave issues we face as a nation by the political leaders and their mixed priorities blended with perks and privileges. Whether it is VUCA or BANI, one thing is crystal clear. In Sri Lanka, being proactive in anticipating the challenges and being productive in confidently facing them is, an, is in high demand. Professionalism in all fronts with high degree of transparency and trustworthiness is what a BANI world would require. Now, uh, Nobody is going to fix the world for us, but working together, making the use of technological innovations and human communities alike, we might just be able to fix it ourselves, says Jamais Casio. Living in a world with banny illusions, we need a banny ignition. That's how I would look at it, by individuals and institutions alike. I would propose it as being bold, assertive, neutral, and innovative. In order to move ahead in changing for better and in turn creating the future, we need to equip ourselves with future-proof competencies. In other words, the need to cultivate knowledge, skills, and attitudes critical to successful job performance. Choosing the right set of competencies is core for consistent performance expected by an employee. What has been echoed as future competencies can be easily labeled as A, B, C, D, E. Let us see what they are. A is for analytical thinking. Irrespective of whether our background is from science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is popularly known as STEM or not, the future demands us to be analytical. With the massive inflow of information, Selecting, prioritizing, focusing, and deciding are key with regard to speedy actions. If we do not become smart in this terrain, what possibly could happen will be analysis paralysis. 
it further invites us to work systematically and logically to resolve problems, identify causation, and anticipate unexpected results. It also involves managing issues by drawing on own experience and knowledge and calls on other resources as necessary. At a time when there's a conscious effort to shift GCE advanced level students from art stream to STEM areas, the emphasis on analytical skills is very relevant. Sharpness of reasoning than getting overly emotional in decision making is what is acuity required in many social fronts. B refers to business savviness. Having a holistic understanding about the world of business is essential for any manager to perform and progress. Further, it demands us to move beyond our functional silos in becoming broader in our perspectives, encompassing wider perspectives. Narrow speciality should pave way for multi-skilling with required depth and breadth. If I take a human resource executive as an example, is he or she knowing the business realities such as market conditions, competitive activities, opportunities and threats out there and the key people requirements accordingly. I still recall when I interviewed the chief executive officers of corporates in South Asian countries as a part of my doctoral research, a significant majority of them expressed that my HR person knows HR, but he or she does not know business. Partnership with the co-business processors in getting connected to business-related decision-making is a key for a collective contribution towards corporate success. As a nation, are we there is a big question mark. Both the public and private sectors alike, what we sadly see missing is a much needed holistic thinking. How people pursue their personal agendas with a narrow ulterior perspective with gross ignorance or glaring inconsistency is very pathetic to observe. C is all about a creative mindset. Creative thinking is a mental activity which produces new ideas or new insights. It does this by repatterning or repatterning thoughts. In fact, our mind is a sum total of our memories, images, desires, expectations, beliefs, feelings, and other such mental processes. Thinking is therefore a sequence of images and events which constitute our mind. Creativity involves breaking patterns and thinking out of the box. A mind pattern based on traditional or stale perceptions should give rise to a fresh new way of creative thinking. The result is the generation of the new ideas. Warren Bennett described creativity as a dimension of a new paradigm for managers, a new worldview for managers. Despite the proliferation of automation, robotics, and other vistas with artificial intelligence, AI, human creativity will be much, in, much high in demand in the continuing era of imagination. Whether we make a conscious effort to foster creativity among the school children leading to imagination and innovation is a question mark. D deals with digital diligence. Technology has always been an enhancer of our work from adding machine to the advanced computer, this was the case. Such extensive applications are broadly categorized as digital transformations. When integration of digital devices to our daily lives happening at an increasingly rapid pace, it is the survival of the fittest in being digitally diligent. In simple terms, it is about the smartness one demonstrates in embracing the change with regards to changing technology. It was Joseph Schumpeter, the Austrian-American economist, who first spoke of a gale of creative destruction in order to sustain economic growth. We can see a parallel to that in the new popular use of the term disruption. Professor Clayton Christensen of Harvard Business School, who is widely regarded as the concept initiator of disruption, says a disruption displaces an existing market industry or technology and produces something new and more efficient and worthwhile. Whilst being disruptive on one hand, the need is to be creative on the other hand. 
we are witnessing profound shifts around all industries marked by the emergence of new business models, the disruption of uh, incumbents, and the reshaping of production, consumption, transportation, and delivery systems. Observe Klaus Schwab in his acclaimed book, Fourth Industrial Revolution. Are we reaping the benefits of our digital initiatives? Perhaps to some extent. Creation of the Information and Communication Technology Agency, ICTA, and its multiple initiatives appear as constructive steps. Being ahead in South Asia with 4.5G mobile communication technology is, it, is another sign to say that we have positive trends to encourage the society to be more digitally diligent. E entails emotional maturity. In order to harmonize the rise of artificial intelligence, AI, we need to foster emotional intelligence, EI. So what requires is AI, EI synergy in being high tech and high touch. As uh, Daniel Goldman elaborated, EI is a capacity for recognizing our own feelings and those of others, for motivating ourselves and for managing emotions well in ourselves and in our relationships. Despite many subsequent presentations and interpretations, I still prefer the five key components of EI advocated by Goldman. They are self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation, empathy, and effective relationships. If I am to single out, empathy is the key. In order to ensure lasting relationships and sustainable partnerships, one need to look from others' perspectives. We need to make a conscious effort to move from taking one-sided, emotionally leading, erratic decisions to a more mature platform. Sri Lankans have a long way to go in this respect. I see a persisting people issue at the macro level baffling the national leaders. How to pick the right person to the right position. Especially with regard to the key ones from a national perspective is essential. We have been regularly seeing this pleasure expressed by a wide section of the public through social media and other means about certain key appointments. It is pertinent to mention what David Ogilvy, the advertising tycoon, had to say with respect to hiring. If each of us hires people who are smaller than we are, we shall become a company of dwarfs. But if we, each of us hires people who are bigger than we are, we will become a company of giants. In order to hire people with potential, the process has to be professionally designed and delivered. Leaders should be performers in practicing what they preach. They inspire, influence, and initiate in such a manner to ignite result-oriented action. In contrast, laggards are passengers. They hamper the progress by being lazy and lethargic. Indecisiveness resulting in inaction is often common in their approach. Do we see more leaders or laggards? The answer lies in the results they achieve. It is better to light a candle than curse the darkness. You cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today, so said Abraham Lincoln. We need to embrace competencies required for future in the present itself. We need to train not only the current managers, but also the emerging leaders in becoming future-proof ABCD. So ABCD is one clear way of awakening to the required competencies and to take key strategic initiatives accordingly. Change and competencies should be also connected to coexistence. This is to do with sustainability. It essentially refers to satisfying the needs today without sacrificing tomorrow. The emerging concept of quadruple bottom line sheds light here. It's all about profit, planet, and people with an overarching purpose. We need to be purpose-driven in all our endeavors as individuals, interactive teams, and institutions alike. It is an invitation to be holistic, harmonized, and humane. It reminds me what I learned from my alma mater, disque out discede, in Latin meaning learning or depart. We need to interpret it in the contemporary corporate circles as perform 
O depart. Dear graduates, as we clearly so as we saw clearly so far, championing change in a bany world with right set of A, B, C, D, E competencies aligned to a purpose-driven approach will be a competitive necessity. You will be absorbed into different types of workplaces. You will be climbing the managerial ladder as an economic value creator on one side and ethical value curator on the other side. Despite the doom and gloom that, that may appear in many fronts, let us strive to be positive, proactive, and productive. What we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday, and our present thoughts build our lives of tomorrow. Our life is a creation of our mind, so said Buddha. I wholeheartedly wish all graduates gathered here a glorious future. May you go, grow, and glow. Thank you very much.